Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Double Game Week 34, where we look at what the recommendations are for this coming week, what transfers you may want to make, and we start by looking at how the players in the system did in Game Week 33. Starting with the expensive keepers, Leno got 9 and that's all. For the cheaper keepers, Dubravka and Petrovic got 6 and that's all. For the expensive defenders, we had White on 5, he's the only one. It was good for me because I had White and he got subbed when it was still a clean sheet. And then they Arsenal let in two goals, so maybe they're going to keep him on the pitch next time. For the cheaper defenders, we have Gusto 6, Chilwell 4 and that's all. Eight Nore didn't play, but he's got two games in this coming uh, double game week 34. Hopefully he'll be playing both of those. I say hopefully because I've got him, so I, I need him to play. For the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, Fernandes 15, and we did make him green last week saying he was a good buy. And we've stuck by him all season, so uh, I think we're doing all right there. The other expensive midfielders did nothing. For the cheaper midfielders, Palmer 26, Gordon 17. Well done if you had both of those. If you captained Palmer, well done. Garnacho 4, the rest nothing. For the expensive forwards, Isaac 12, Haaland 10, Solanke 7, Watkins 7. So that was nice. It's only Darwin that let the side down there. For the cheaper forwards, Jackson 14, Kuna 12. So there was the chance to get some very good scores in the week we've just had. Now looking forward to game week 34, what do we think of the various players starting with the expensive keepers? So if you've got Vicario, it's okay to sell him. He is quite expensive and he's not even got a game this week. However, he does have a double game week 35 and he's got a double in 37. So the only way I'd be selling Vicario is if you your other keeper wasn't playing this week, like it's Ariola or Kelleher, or you had two free transfers and nothing else to do then you may want to switch him out for another keeper that's going to have a better game week. But there are so many other things to do. If you've got Vicario and a playing keeper, I'd absolutely keep him. He's orange just because you can sell him if you want to. Reyes, good keeper, reasonable chance of one or two clean sheets this week. He's got two games. O'Neill at home to Sheffield United, reasonable chance of a clean sheet. Next week he's at home to Burnley, another reasonable chance of a clean sheet. Leno, home to Liverpool, probably won't get a clean sheet there. And Pickford's got two games. The first one's home to Forest, so he may get a clean sheet. For the Merseyside derby, less likely to get a clean sheet, but he will inevitably be a lot of fun. As for the cheaper keepers, Neto does have two games, but it's away to Villa and away to Wolves. And I think it's more likely than not he's going to get no clean sheets there. If you've got him, that's fine. He may get you some nice points. He should get at least four points, maybe five, and he could get 12. So um, personally, if I was getting a new keeper this week, I wouldn't get Neto, but he's all right. Petrovic, away to Arsenal, probably not going to get much. So I've put in three new players this week. They're all Palace. So Henderson, he's got two home games. There's a chance he could get one or two clean sheets. Obviously, there's a chance there's a reasonable chance to get one or two clean sheets. Personally, I would expect Newcastle to score, and I think West Ham are probably going to score as well. But there's a chance. If you've got Vicario and nothing else to do, you could get Henderson. Dupravka's generally OK. We don't know when Pope's going to be back. He's away to Palace this week. Don't go buying Dubravka. But if you've got him, you can reckon he's going to play. Ariola, as far as we know, still injured. And Kelleher, I've made him red. So I'm going to get rid of him in the system because Allison's back now. You don't have to sell Kelleher. He's very cheap, 3.9. So if you've got Kelleher and a playing keeper like Onana or Rea, that's fine. You just play the other keeper all the time. But if you had Kelleher and Ariola or Kelleher and Vicario, then you kind of need to make a keeper switch this week. For the defenders, expensive defenders, Virgil van Dijk, Double game week, I would expect him to get between 5 and 10 points this game week. I'd be surprised if he gets less than 5, for sure. Trippier, probably not back this game week, we don't know for sure, but then he's got a nice run of fixtures. Don't go buying Trippier this week. Robertson, I've not made him green. There's a chance he's not going to get two lots of 90 minutes, whereas Virgil van Dijk, assuming he stays fit, will probably play all of both games. Robertson's got less chance but Robertson is really quite attacking so Robertson may only get two or three points 
but he's more likely to get 12 or 15 points than Virgil is. So if you're a gambling person, you go Robertson, you want to play it safe, you go Virgil van Dijk. Then White and Saliba, Arsenal defenders, fine double game week. Lots of managers have got one or two Arsenal defenders, but after this game week, they're probably going to offload at least one of them because they're going to want other players that have got nicer fixtures. But for this game week, certainly any Arsenal player in the system is a good player. Pedro Poe is not playing this week, but then assuming he's fit, and I think he might have a flag at the moment, he's got a double next week, but it's not a great double, and he's got a double in 37. If you've got Poro, it's absolutely fine to sell him if you want to. And if he's still flagged next week, then you'll probably be glad you did sell him. I wouldn't expect him to get a clean sheet next game week. He may well not be worth having now. And then Gabriel, he's a very good Arsenal defender to have. For the cheaper defenders... Chilwell's back, getting some minutes, nice and attacking. Not worth buying this game week away to Arsenal, but after this game week, if you're a gambling person, you like Robertson, you might like Chilwell. We need to see what's going to happen with his minutes. If he was playing 90 minutes every game week, he'd definitely be worth having. But at the moment, that's not the case. Udogi's not playing, but at least he's fit as far as we know. If you want to sell him, get someone else in this week, that's fine. There's a chance you get a return at some point in the rest of the season, but I wouldn't be banking on it. Aiton Nori's flagged. I'm assuming he's going to play. If we find out before the deadline that he's definitely not playing, I may transfer him out. But if I don't hear, then I'm going to assume he's playing. And he's got a double game week. He's nice and attacking, so he might get some returns there. So Mitchell's another new entry for Crystal Palace. Two home games. I put him in here in case you wanted to get another double game weaker who's a defender i wouldn't be buying him but he's okay because he's got a chance of clean sheets and i thought long and hard about which crystal palace defender to put in here and i thought mitchell only 4.5 he's the right all right the thing is after this game week there's a chance you're not going to play him at all so you're then going to sub him out or just leave him on your bench but doggy to mitchell if you've got two free transfers nothing else to do that's an all right move if you've got one free transfer and the rest of your squad's all right, I probably wouldn't do that move. Branthwaite's got a double, might only get three or four points. Remote chance of getting seven or eight points. So Bradley F. Marks has read he's now injured and Trent is back. So there's a reasonable chance he won't get any more minutes for the rest of the season. But like Kelleher, you don't have to sell him if you've got him, but he'll just be sitting on your bench and doing nothing. So if you've got the transfers and can afford to swap them for someone who has got double game week, you might want to do that. And then Gusto's away to Arsenal. Don't expect anything from him this game week. But after this game week, he's got a double, then at home to West Ham, then another double. For the expensive midfielders, Salah, although he's not been great recently, don't let that put you off him. If you can easily get to Salah and you've not got him, I think he's still worth getting. Away to Fulham, away to Everton, he could do well. Son's not playing. He's probably going to be highly sold this game week. And then I expect next game week, he'd be the most bought player. Because he's got a double next game week. So if you've got two free transfers, you may want to swap Son out. If you've got one free transfer, possibly sell him. You probably can sell him, actually, because the person you sell him for has a good chance of getting eight points, which then justifies the cost of bringing him back in next week, I guess. Saka is a good player worth having, as is Odegaard, as is Fernandes. Now, Fernandes hasn't got a double this week, but he has got Sheffield United. So my current plans, personally, I'm intending to sell Foden and get in Fernandes rather than getting in a double game week player, just because I think Fernandes is all right. And he has got a double in 37. Foden's all right. Luis Diaz is right. He's got a double, but I've not made him green. Because after this game week, I think you're probably not going to want him. Whereas Salah, you could justify keeping hold of after this game week. Madison, I'm saying he's sellable. He's not actually been great and he's not playing this game week. But he does double next game week. For the cheaper midfielders, I think Havertz is a sensible buy. Got a double. Richarlison's not playing. If you want to sell him, you can. Palmer, obviously a good buy. Away to Arsenal this game week. But he does get lots of points. Barnes is a good player. Can't be sure about his minutes. Away to Palace this week. He might get something. Gordon's clearly a good player. He has some nice fixtures coming up. So Eze, if I had to buy a Palace player this week, 
it'd be Eze. Six million. No one would be surprised if he gets between 10 and 16 points this game week. People would be surprised if he got, I think, five or fewer points. So he's a pretty good midfielder to get. But it's possible after this game week you wouldn't buy him. So, for example, on this page, if you had Richarlison and two free transfers, or even just one, I guess, you could swap Richarlison for Eze this game week. And then next week, if you wanted to get rid of Eze, you could do that. Rice, I'm saying he's green. He's worth having. Eze will probably outscore Rice this week, but between now and the end of the season, I think Rice may get more. And then Garnacho, home to Sheffield United. So on this page, apart from Havertz, I think Eze's probably got the best chance of the highest score this game week. But between now and the end of the season, which is only five weeks, I think, I think Gordon, Garnacho, Palmer are all going to outscore Eze. So I'm just saying that to be aware of it. Eze's a good buy, but he might be a short-term buy. For the forwards, Haaland, not green. He's got a knock. He came off a bit early in the European game this week. I think it was yesterday. Away to Brighton, then away to Forest. If he is fit and he is playing, obviously most teams are going to have him. If you've not got him, I'd say absolutely not worth buying this week. Watkins, good player, home to Bournemouth. Not many managers have him now. A lot of people have rather sold him. So you don't need to fear Watkins about being highly owned. Not many managers are going to have him this game week. I wouldn't be bringing him in, but if you've got him, he's absolutely fine to play. He's at good player. Darwin, he's got a double this game week, but I've not made him green. I think his minutes are a bit of a risk. And after this game week, unless he's brilliant this game week, uh, he's probably going to be sold by quite a few teams. And then solanke has got two games this week. Reasonable chance of a return. So he could get nine points, perhaps. He could equally get three. So, a bit of a gamble. Personally, I wouldn't use a transfer to bring in Solanke this game week. I would rather have someone like Izak, I think. Because long term, I think Izak's going to be better. But Solanke is fine, and Solanke will probably outscore Izak this week. For the cheaper forwards, Hoyland's good player, possibly a very good player, and he's home to Sheffield United this week, then home to Burnley, then he's got Palace, then he's got a double. So he's, if I had to choose between him and Solanke, if I had two free transfers, I may go Solanke this week and then switch to Hoyland next week. If I only had one free transfer, I'd probably go for Hoyland this week and then just play Hoyland the rest of the season. It's only 7 million, reasonable chance of some good points. Jackson away to Arsenal, but after that he's going to be good if he doesn't get a yellow card. Kuna, if I had to buy a forward this week, Kuna would be a better option, I think, than Solanke and he's cheaper. And he's going to hurt less if he sits on your bench. Upcoming fixtures are better. So I think Kuna's all right. Munez, nice and cheap. And he can get points sometimes. So we're now going to look at the bench order and captaincy. This is my suggestions based on lots of sensible things and intuition. You can do whatever you like. This is just my suggestion. Going to go through the keepers. The first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting, is the one you put on the bench. Vicario is not playing, obviously he's on your bench. Ariola's possibly injured, so he'll be on your bench. Petrovic away to Arsenal, not expecting a clean sheet. Kelleher's almost certainly not playing, but I've put him there above Petrovic just in case Allison gets injured or something, so he does get a bit of game time. And then Leno's home to Liverpool, probably won't get a clean sheet there. Onana home to Sheffield United, fair chance of a clean sheet. Dubravka's away to Palace. But Newcastle have been a bit better the last couple of game weeks defensively. So he could get a clean sheet. And then uh, Neto's got two games. So I've now got the four doublers. So that's Neto, Pickford, Henderson, Raya. That's my suggested order. So if I had Pickford and Neto, personally I'd be playing Pickford. But if you wanted to do it the other way around, that's fine. It's up to you. Regarding the other players... The first player you see that you've got, I'm suggesting position three on your bench, the next one position two, the last one position one. If you get your bench right, the other players sort themselves out, of course. So Barnes, Bradley, and I'm not showing the Tottenham players, by the way. Chilwell, Gusto, Munez, Jackson, Trippier, Gordon, Foden, Palmer, Garnacho, Isaac, Haaland, Hoyland. That's funny having those two together. Watkins, Fernandez. 
Now we're on to the double game weekers. Branthwaite, Agnori, Mitchell, Rice, Virgil van Dijk, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Robertson, Luis Diaz, Solanke, Odegaard, Havertz, Kuna, Darwin, Eze, Saka, Salah. So, um, yeah, I think that seems pretty reasonable. I thought long and hard about that. Obviously, some of these would be slightly wrong, but I think that's completely reasonable. Regarding captaincy, I think you've got a few choices. But Salah is the obvious one to get to wear the old mule hat this week. Apart from him, you could choose Saka, another sensible choice. Eze is a good choice. Kuna is a good choice. Havertz, Solanke, any of these for your captain, any of these for your vice captain. Salah's probably the safest though. Ordinarily, I say don't choose two from the same team, but when it's a double game week, it's kind of okay to. So if you wanted to choose Saka and Havertz, you can. Personally, I wouldn't be going on Darwin. I wouldn't be going on Luis Diaz, for example. I would definitely be sticking, I think, to one of these six. These are the safest ones. And then regarding the background picture, my football club is Pompey, which of course is Portsmouth. Portsmouth, they were victorious in League One and they're now going to get promoted to the Championship, so that's very good. And as some of you may well know, Pompey is the main naval base for Britain. It has been for about 850 years, I think. And HMS Victory is, of course, stationed at Pompey. And this is Victory in the Battle of Trafalgar which is an amazing battle if you ever get used, ever get a chance to look into it and what happened. Nelson's tactics were brilliant. And of course, what really helped uh, the British fleet was all the footballs that were flying about in the sky and on fire. That made a big difference, I think. So there we have it. My suggestions for Double Game Week 34. If you don't have a lot of doublers, don't worry about it too much. A good single Game Week player is probably going to be better than a mediocre double game week player. So as long as your single game week players are good players and most of the players in the system are okay, you should be all right. There's a reasonable chance that some of us, a lot of us, are going to get red arrows this week because some people are bench boosting. So some managers are effectively getting 30 players out this week and we're not getting anywhere near that. But that's okay. You Even with a good team, you'll sometimes get a red arrow. So... Hopefully you can enjoy this double game week coming up. Hopefully we get some good scores. Thanks for watching. Bye.